On today's podcast, we're going to recap Week 12 in the NFL Best Win, Worst Loss Awards and the player I'm rooting for the most this NFL season. And then we're just going to do a full college football selection show deal here with McShay. I'm going to give it my top 12. We have a lot of results to discuss. We have to talk Indiana after Indiana week, which is what last week will historically be known. Scholars will debate it for centuries. And also the SEC losing all of their late rank options potentially and what we do with them and just what a weird day Saturday was for a million different reasons. So Todd and I are going to run through it. We have a difference of opinion on one program in particular. We've got life advice. Um, also some Kyle advice because he helped uh, a stranger. He talked to a stranger. A stranger from a van approached Kyle and he talked to him and helped him with a task. And now Kyle is injured. So probably just fast forward to that, honestly. So what I'm going to do on today's pod is McShane and I are going to handle the top 12 for the college football poll and just get through that. We're not going to do any NFL. So I'm going to give you the NFL right now. Week 12. All right. Best win. It probably is whoever wins tonight between the Ravens, Chargers, the Harbaugh Bowl, new neighbor, Jim. Um, probably won't hang out a ton. But look, um, whoever wins this one, it kind of gets like when you look at the Ravens and the profile and everything and you're thinking, all right, they can have five losses after tonight. Like, do I have to look at them differently? Does that impact the MVP race? All the stuff with Lamar, because I still like the Ravens, despite the fact that I have been making excuses for the defensive numbers throughout much of the season because the opposing quarterback resume. Um, that doesn't change tonight, certainly going against Herbert, but we also know that Herbert is a different style of quarterback just because they're using him differently instead of just this passing fest all over the place without any balance, even though I think it's pretty remarkable because the roster was kind of a reset off season, and yet here they are. But then again, you can get to the schedule kind of stuff that the Chargers have done. As we mentioned last week, I think they faced four teams that bench or four quarterbacks that at some point have been benched. Um, but we love that Cincinnati win because that was actually a tough win, holding off those dudes despite the dominant first half. So I think the best win is actually still up for grabs. But if we go with Sunday's action, I think it's Philly last night. I'm going to give you a couple of reasons. They dominate the Rams 37-20 in L.A. Just NFL hotbed out here. Um, Philly's now nine and two. They're the two seed in the NFC. They've won seven straight since that Tampa Bay debacle of like is Sirianni going to make the season. What's going on with Hurts? What's, what's happening here? They missed the quarter. Remember, remember how bad it was. Again, it's the carryover. Again, preconceived assumptions on football teams, not just in college football, but the carryover to their second half collapse last season, losing to Tampa, knowing that it's a rematch, and then you lose to them again. Well, everything's great. Um, a little bit on the hey, it's the schedule stupid. Does the schedule it's the schedule stupid theory apply here? A little. Um, if you look at their four ten opponents winning percentage among the playoff teams in the NFC, that is the easiest so far. But I will offer up a counterpoint to that. Uh, there's some dominant wins in here. Now, some of these teams put together some of these records, and I'm still kind of like on the fence about what they really are capable of doing. That if you can put together just some ass kickings over the span of like two months, you've got a few to pick from, like they do. And yeah, I know the Giants are terrible and they're just a laughing stock today. Uh, Dallas has been a huge disappointment. But then I look at that game last night, like that, that was domination. So that's three in there. And the comeback against Washington when they're having the offensive issues all the first half. And then the Cincy win again because wins against Cincinnati are good wins despite their record. So there's enough there for me to be excited about Philadelphia again. And everybody's excited about them because they got the primetime bump last night, Sunday Night Football. So legit Super Bowl contender again, check. Uh, I still like Detroit better. And after 10 weeks, this is the other part, after 10 weeks of Lamar, maybe a sprinkle of Josh Allen in there, but Lamar, like Lamar's the only choice at MVP, we have some Saquon Barkley love because of his numbers. So let's look at this. Also, the funny, the pylon that you have to in the media on the Giants part of this, like, first of all, nobody really thought the Giants were going to be good. Nobody really thought Daniel Jones would be going to be good, except those those moments where it's like the lights hitting him just right. And you're like, does he look good? Right now? Um, but the Saquon part of it is just piling on. We've covered this. I like the way 
I shouldn't say we. I like the way that I talked about it better than anybody else because it was like, what are the Giants supposed to do with Saquon Barkley? Okay, I know the owner wants him, and I know they spent the pick on him, but they're going to spend millions of dollars on a guy that's not going to make that much of a difference for him because they're really not that good, and they're in a massive reset year. So let him go somewhere else. If you love him, set him free, right? But because Barkley's now an MVP candidate, it's like we can even throw that into the Giants. But the Giants have bigger issues than Saquon Barkley running all over the field for the Philadelphia Eagles. But if we look at the MVP race, which is surprising, I will admit, we're we're actually going to bring up a running back potentially as MVP in the NFL. Can we allow to do that anymore? Again, 14 years post AD, Adrian Peterson. The initials are actually all day AD, not AP. Sooners fans get really pissed off about that. Um, Peterson. I love that he won the MVP in 2012. I feel like that is the defining, I call it post AD because that is the defining year of where, like, I don't know if a running back can carry a football team the way that he did for that team. One, is because he was that special, and two, because the team itself wasn't that special. 14th in points scored, 14th in points allowed. He carried that team, all right? Uh, Let's look back at his numbers. He had 2,100 yards, 12 touchdowns on the ground, 30 catches, 220 yards receiving, zero touchdowns receiving. Again, the team was average. Barkley's at just under 1,400 yards, 10 TDs on the ground. He's got 27 catches for 257 and two touchdowns receiving. He is on pace, if you look at his 126 rushing yards per game, times 17 games, the extra game, he's on pace for about 2,150 in total yards. That would be a massive season. It would be even more than Peterson. It also would be unlikely, I would think, that that would happen. Well, I shouldn't say it that way. Um, I don't know that they're going to need Barkley or if it's smart for them to use Barkley this way, depending on how the last couple of weeks come together. You would think you would want to get him rest and reps and not have him chase the 2,000 yards. I'm all for it, but running backs with his injury history and all this different stuff. So how did this happen, right? Because it could be we have a reminder to not just hand or start engraving the MVP trophy for Lamar the way that we wanted to after like nine, 10 weeks. Um, I think the running back being back in the mix felt impossible, but I'm glad it's happening. And I think finally, like this push also was a reminder of how incredibly impressionable we can be, whether it's convinced that Lamar will be the only option to now Saquon being offered up as the better option and realizing that a lot of it is the primetime bump because he was incredible again last night with the all-purpose yards and a running back closing out the game kids that's how they used to do it on Sundays the running back closed things out however I would still pick Lamar I don't care about the losses he's even better than he was last year again it's not so much Lamar if he's better than he was last year when he won the MVP that sets the standard it's comparing it just like voting in the college football poll comparing what you think of this to the other options that you have and I still would think Lamar I would just have a hard time ever thinking that a running back could be more important but I kind of like that it's happening 10 plus years after Peterson did it. Okay, worst loss. You are not going to find anything worse than what happened to the Washington Commanders yesterday. You're not going to find anything all season. It could take multiple seasons. That game was an all-timer. You would say it's a karma when they ended my Bears fandom. By the way, Caleb Williams looked fantastic yesterday, overtime loss to the Vikings. But I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Is Eberflus, is he responding to Eberflus's coaching? Does he get an extension? Probably a Thursday local topic in Chicago. Um, I'm, I'm pausing for dramatic effect here because I cannot, most of you know this because you're listening to the pod right now, I cannot express to you how much fun it was watching. And I'm not a fan of either team, don't care. Stanford Steve in town, Monday Night Football, ESPN, on my couch all day yesterday. Great time catching up with my bud. And we were watching that game play out with all the different miscues and mistakes and swings, dying laughing. We could not stop laughing. So let's review what happened here. 3-3 at the half. Washington, touchdown. Could go up 10-3? Nope. Missed extra point, 9-3. That will, that will matter. Dallas goes up 10-9. Then it's a punt fest for five possessions in the second half. Then Dallas kicks a field goal up 13-9. Then Washington fumble. Then Dallas TD, 29. Cowboys are going to pull off this 
long time. This was a big, big game back in the day, kids. This was a game where you were like, I don't even care. I just need to watch Dallas against Washington. Well, here we were. We were in it, and it looked like Dallas was going to pull the division upset. You're going to have these questions about Jaden decline in the second half, like what's going on. We get in a little Cam Newton, Sam Darnold, like early month fluky start to the career, like what's going on. Anyway, um, most important drive of maybe the season because Jaden, some of the concerns about like, where's this going right now? Uh, nine plays, 69 yards. He was seven of seven on the drive. He gets it to 2015, right? And I thought that drive was like everything, everything that you have hope for with Jane Daniels. You're like, oh, okay, wait a minute. This is going to be fine. It isn't a big deal. We're good, even though you're still down. Um, so 77 yards, excuse me, 69 yards on that drive, seven to seven on the drive. Just double checking the notes here. And then Turpin hits the B button, 99 yards, runs it back after fumbling kickoff return. You don't see kickoff returns a ton anymore. So now Dallas is back up. Then we've got a field goal. It's 27-20. Dallas punts it, trying to run clock. There's no way that Washington's going to score, except they do. One play, 86 yards. Terry McLaurin gets behind all of these guys. I still cannot believe. I mean, it has to happen because it's sports. But to have a receiver get open and then beat everybody down the field for the game-tying touchdown doesn't make any sense. I still can't believe that that part happened until the next part because it wasn't 27-27. It was 27-26 because Washington misses another extra point. So they have to kick an onside kick. (laughs) They kick it, and Wanye Thomas out of Georgia Tech decides to run it in for the touchdown. Now, award time. We're going to call this Please Take My Daughter Award because any time a football player decides to not run it in for a touchdown, the announcers freak out like we just saw a future, well, the president might not even be the right word for this, like the greatest human being in the history, like three wise men, whatever, whatever your deal is. If a running back or receiver falls down before going in the end zone, even when it's actually stupid to do it, the announcers freak out. Trevion Henderson did it for Ohio State. And I would argue you should have just gone in. And I'm sure Trevion, after they pushed it in for the last touchdown, was like, yeah, that, if I'd known that, maybe I would have just gone in for the touchdown because that would have been cooler. But not, not to Gus Johnson. Gus Johnson lost his mind. He's like, this is the culture at the world famous Ohio State. This is why I don't even know what I'm doing right now, but you get the point. And it just, whenever it happens, the announcers go way too far. Where it's like, have you met my daughter? I can imagine one guy, like the next time somebody does it, like, I'm so proud of this young man. I'm going to hug him from behind and breathe on his neck slowly. You know? And you're just like, all right. It actually isn't smart to do it all the time. However, Wanye should have not run it in for the touchdown. Mike McCarthy's on the side of the road. What the fuck? And at that point down, eight Washington has another. It was not going to happen for Washington that day. That is the worst loss with all of those things, all of them happening in the second half. And it's a division rival. And you've lost a bunch in a row. You're from seven and 10 to now seven and five. I think that Jaden drive was really, really important because maybe that gets thrown back in the mix. And he hits McLaurin on, the, you know, so like this wasn't a Jaden game. It, it's it's not a Jaden. It shouldn't be. It'll get all thrown in the mix. But that's that's a tough one. That's the kind of thing where I'd probably be in the parking lot for a couple hours afterwards. All right. Um, what else have we got for you? I am rooting for Bryce Young in the way that I don't know that I've rooted for an NFL player before. All right. He gets benched. It looks awful. So we understand the benching, but we don't like the way that it's handled. Um, I pushed back on this idea that he was never going to play for them again or would he ever be a starter. I had said when it happened, the chances are, considering how the roster works out and they're not very good, and they're going to want to try to figure out if this reset can help them get something for him or somehow a reclamation of the asset here. I thought he played really well yesterday against Kansas City. Um, 
Maybe that's overstating it. Maybe it is because I'm rooting for him so much, but I want to see this work out. I don't know if it's in Carolina. I don't know. I want to see Bryce Young be a multi-season starting quarterback in this league because of how down every like it was thought to be impossible even to be in this situation. And this was always the more likely situation that he was going to starting he's going to be the starting quarterback for Carolina again because they spent the number one pick on him just two years ago. By the way, his game yesterday is the best of the season so far, not even close to being the best game of his career at Green, excuse me, at home against Green Bay late last season. Kind of lit it up for him. Some of those things, if you go back and look at it, it's like, oh, it kind of gave him hope coming in the second year, overhaul of things, better weapons, more investment in the offensive line. Not the case. He looked shattered. So maybe the mental reset was actually the right thing to do with him. What was wrong was the reaction as if like the career was entirely over and he was never going to get another chance again. So anyway, close loss to the Chiefs, uh, Carolina team that doesn't get pressure on any opposing quarterbacks. They hit Mahomes five times yesterday, and there was a pressure from the right side that Mahomes didn't even see. It was so weird because it was a moment where you see Mahomes not seeing something that is actually more surprising. A couple other things here. Um, This isn't going to be the stat of the day. And there is something to be said about the KC O-line. The fact they're adding somebody else late tells you how worried they may be, but it doesn't matter. Like they could lose all their games if they're in the playoffs going in, probably picking them still. Um, Kyler was pressured 16 times yesterday, three points through three quarters. That's one point a quarter for Arizona's offense. Very low on the low side. They ended up doubling up in the fourth quarter, six in their loss to Seattle and making a mess of the NFC West because San Francisco, backup quarterback, missing a bunch of other pieces, smoked by Green Bay. We already covered the Rams and on. So Seattle's looking good here, but Kyler not. Again, 16 pressures, five times he was sacked. He ran right then kind of jitterbug and then kind of whatever and was caught in between, didn't know what he wanted to do. He didn't even get hit hard. And this is my Kyler thing, man. He just sort of was like hit and then was on the ground. And then we got Clayton Toon getting loose on the sideline. It didn't matter. Uh, McBride's still a stud for them. Really the only reason. I don't know if it's the pick six on the other side because then Gino gave back one in the end zone. So I think the point turnover math, that's all sort of made up that I have in my head when I'm watching a game kind of evened out. All right, last thing, stat, cue it. Stats to impress people. Let's talk a little Bo Nix. So Bo Nix has this great first half against Raiders statistically, yet they're not converting on third down. So I struggle with Bo Nix. I don't know. I didn't like him as much as I like the other quarterbacks in front of him. I could be wrong. Done it before. Won't be new. However, pass block win rate. Did you know this? Because we're coming to Colorado next week. So we want all of you guys to be armed with this kind of information. If you're talking to strangers, if you're talking to relatives, holidays coming up. Did you know? that Denver is number one in pass block win rate. You didn't know that. Good chance a lot of you didn't know it. Is that part of it? And why so many of these throws, I think Peyton's doing such a good job with Bo Nix where it's like, man, maybe it's not going to look as pretty as some of the other guys with the efficiency and beating up on a Raiders team that had to go back to Desmond Ritter. Yeah, back on the scene. Check it out. Check your depth charts, kids. Stay on top of it. So I told you at the top, we were only going to do college football with McShay because everything that happened this past weekend, I will know uh, the past week is Indiana week. At least my personal history, it will be Indiana week. Uh, and then we have the Indiana result. And then what we a have wild the Saturday, SEC. though. Yeah, it really was. And I mean, the Indiana result, I don't think was all that wild, but the SEC stuff. And so it led to just the cycle of all of it all and over Big again. And Big 12, too. Yeah, I mean, when I had tweeted out, like, the committee's running out of teams, FCS Skip Bayless chimes in immediately and starts just, like, making it about the SEC again. And I was like, well, no, I mean, you know, the Colorado loss to see them get manhandled on the ground. Because if you look at, like, where Colorado's flawed, they're actually pretty good against the run. And then Devin Neal just beasts them for a day. But Kansas becomes the first team ever to have a losing record to beat three ranked teams. But... You know, Kansas was supposed to be good, and they've sneaky been in all of it with just a bad record. So I don't even think it's necessarily a bad loss for Colorado. However, with this massive, I think nine teams are still alive in the Big 12. We're going to have to start changing the way we look at some of those bottom teams, and that will uh, lead to some conversation right now. All right, so I'm going to do the top 12. You're going to do it with me. This will be my list. So Oregon, Ohio State, Texas, we're fine with, right? 
Yep. yep. There's no other option. Agreed. Although, yes, there could be a Texas conversation. But I would say if you're just looking at the schedule with them, when you watch them they play. They have not played these, great, but, but I believe that they have the talent. They have not played great. See, I feel like when I watch them, I go, I'd still believe in them. That's what I'm saying. I I, I believe, and and I think when they get into a a huge matchup, they're going to open things up offensively. I think that there's more there. But um, it'll be interesting. I mean, whatever. I'm I'm sidetracking us, but it will be interesting to see uh, Quinn Ewers coming off that ankle injury. Clearly, it was his final home game at DKR. They wanted him to, you know, to be in there in the second half, but he he clearly was limited. They ran the ball vast majority of the second half, and you know, it they they it, it was just about survive and advance. But but this offense has not looked the same since since the um the injury that he suffered earlier in the year. So it'll be interesting if if they can turn it on. That would be my big question: Can they turn it on offensively when when the you know all chips are in the middle of the table? Yeah, I guess you could argue it's it's two games, but I felt like they were more in control of this one than they were Arkansas, where Arkansas was a defensive thing. But at least you have the Florida result a couple of weeks ago to I go agree. off of, of when agree. they can open this up. So my point would be when I watch Texas, I don't go, ooh, I think that they are bad. So therefore, like, because then you can start to do an exercise where it's like, well, if you're only going to look at the opposing schedule and never watch a football team play, then that must be really efficient and a lot easier to do. So I have Texas third. You're fine with it. Yep. Who would you put fourth? Georgia. We have that as the same. Really? Give me the Georgia case. Yeah. Um, I know who Georgia is. They're not the elite that we've seen out of them in, in some previous years. I think their defense, you could stack up there. I'm not saying they're as good as some of the other – elite defenses in the country uh, i think you know i i would bet on texas's defense over, over georgia's at this point but uh, and i've seen carson beck transition i even saw it in the loss to ole miss and i, and I said that i, I think he it's like the weight of the world was on his shoulders he was pressing on every down he was trying to force things and, and i've seen him kind of and, and he, even the report in the game about he went back and studied self-scouted and like you saw the difference against Tennessee. I just I think they scare me and and they and they they scare me because they are battle tested and they haven't you know it was one half against Alabama they look good one half they look terrible um, they have not been as consistent as you would expect from a Kirby Smart team but I know the talents there I know the coaching's there and with Penn State like I know everyone's sitting there well why not Penn State. Uh, be, the talent level is different for starters, but if we're not just going off of that, Penn State has not had a tough road. Penn State could have lost that game and, and probably should have lost that game by two to three touchdowns against Ohio State. And then I'm watching, you know, I'm, I'm watching Ohio State dismantle an undefeated Indiana team. And and then I, I turn on the very next window of college football and and it's a slug fest. And I get it. Like, Alabama was a slug. Alabama had that struggle game against Oklahoma and lost by three touchdowns. Penn State had a struggle game against Minnesota, a similar record coming into the game. I think Minnesota was six and four, and and um and Oklahoma was five and five. But but and they found a way to win, and that was good. And it, it took onions from James Franklin, fake punt, and all those sorts of things. But they're struggling with Minnesota at the end of the day. There's not like a clear difference. They're not dominant. They don't have weapons on the outside. You could say the thing, same thing for Georgia, but even their weapons who haven't been great, there's more talent, there's more speed, there's more explosiveness. So I just see a clear difference between the two teams. And it, it's not, you know, the win loss record and all that. But if you're playing week in and week out against that competition, and I don't care, like Danny Cannell, your boy, and everybody else who the anti SEC, I, I, that's fine. But anyone who's reasonable and doesn't have a, a, a horse in the race, everyone I've talked to across the country who like evaluates talent for the like the SEC is the best, and week in and week out it is a grind. And so to see what they've done, and it has not been perfect in their blemishes, but Georgia has just so much more battle tested than Penn State at this point. Um. All right, let's hold off on some of the SEC stuff because I think it comes back into play, though, more no, I agree. for 
for Ole Miss, Bama, and AM and all three teams losing in the way they did and trying to sift through that and figure out, like, is there a landing spot for a three-loss team here still in the 12-team playoff? Do they get one of those last spots there? And it leads right. to the Indiana conversation. But I like it. That was a nice little appetizer of what we're going to yeah, do. Yeah, that would be my um, longest rant of the day, I promise. <laughs> five is five is interesting. I'm I'm really intrigued. I'm, I'm I, I wrote mine down, so it, it's I'm not going to mine re- first. Or yeah, you g- mind? give me yours first here because I have my five here, and I don't think people are going to agree with it. The fighting Tommy Reese's of South Bend. I put Notre Dame five. Mm. You have Tennessee five, don't you? I do. <laughs> hey, by the way, I don't know what to do. I, I, you know, I felt good about three, and then I was like, let's see what happens here. Look, I had Bama up because I go, if I want to do – here's what I started doing. Yep. Is I started looking at, like, your three best wins in this group, and Notre Dame does not hang with Georgia. Um, they don't hang with Tennessee, I don't think. I mean, Tennessee's <sighs> – you know what? Let's do it this way. Let's do your three best opponents. Just – we don't even have to have win, all right? Your three best opponents. Georgia, it's Texas, Bama, and Clemson. Texas, Bama, and Tennessee. Like you could you could flip one of those if you wanted to, if you think that Tennessee well, Tennessee's Texas, yeah. Texas, Bama, Tennessee, and and then and then Clemson is a is like you know, sprinkle on top. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It is Tennessee over Clemson. Um, you don't even have to win, right? So it's just opponents. Three best opponents for Penn State so far. Ohio State, Illinois, and and West Virginia. Is it West Virginia or Minnesota? I think Minnesota's like Minnesota's not terrible. They're all right. Tennessee's three best opponents, Georgia, Bama, Florida. You know, the Florida one's a little tricky there because uh, Mertz gets knocked out of that game, but clearly Florida's actually like better with Lagway. So, you know, what does that mean? Their loss is worse. If you're looking at Notre Dame, who's, yeah, who's Notre Dame? Th- <laughs> well, it's A and M, obviously. Um, I think Louisville's clearly in that, and then Navy and Army were ranked. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> is it is it actually Army? Because I think most of us all thought Army was better than Navy. Uh, is it USC this week? I feel like it I'm talking be- you into my argument without having to talk a whole lot here. Yeah, no, I know. I, I but this is this leads to the I don't know what else to do. The AP has Penn State four. All right, they do not see it the same way we see it with the Georgia thing. The, the AP is lazy. Well, yeah, but I think the committee has actually it, been more. The committee really likes Big Ten. They do football. Uh, I think the committee's treating it more like standings than they I'll are. I'll be surprised when, when when it come the rankings come out if Penn State isn't four. I I'd be shocked if they weren't four because look. Minnesota, you say whatever you want compared to the other SEC stuff. Again, I think that they're a tougher out, and I think I don't what Penn disagree. State did, I don't disagree. Yeah. They're they're a good. They've gotten a lot better. It's a home they're game. Good. It's their Super I like Bowl their quarterback. Yeah, I know he's kind of all over the place, but I like Max. Uh, all right, so I have I have Notre Dame five just because of the ass kicking stuff. The worst loss than Penn State's Ohio State thing. I totally get it. I understand why people would be on my case about it. That's fine. I have Tennessee seven. I could flip Tennessee with Notre Dame or Penn State. I wouldn't get mad about it. Then I think it's the next group of I have Miami. I have SMU. I don't love Boise State, but their loss is against the number one team in the country. So even though I think we all have fallen in love with Tulane here, it's it's tough to do. You're not going to get Tulane all the way up here. Um so now it's eleven and twelve. Well, okay. Right. Can we go back and tier go this? Can we tier this thing yeah, a little bit? Tier it okay. out. And yeah. I don't know if you want to make it two tiers at the top or or just one. But uh, the first tier absolutely includes Oregon, Ohio State, and Texas. I would just, for the sake of this, throw Georgia in there too. To me, uh, I'm fine with that. Although I tried to, well, I, I wasn't putting Bama in that tier necessarily, but I just I wanted to hammer the teams that haven't played anybody because I think that's what a committee is supposed to do. And I think the AP should be doing it, but the AP doesn't want to do it. All right. So and the committee hasn't wanted to either. So whether or not you have Georgia at the bottom of tier one or at the top of tier two, we'll say top of tier two for the sake, it's Georgia four, and then it, however you want to rank them. But tier two includes Georgia. If they're in there, if they're not tier one, Tennessee, Penn state, Notre Dame, would we agree? 
And it doesn't Penn have to State. be in that order. You you had Notre Dame five. I had Tennessee, but it's Tennessee, Penn State, Notre Dame in some order, right? Totally agree. Yeah, because okay. then it's then it opens up from Miami. Well, they'll the coaches have Miami ahead of Tennessee seven to eight. I I mean would disagree with that. Um, but so our, our top group. two tiers cover the first seven teams. It's Oregon, Ohio State, Texas, Georgia, then whatever order: Tennessee, Penn State, Notre Dame. So we're through yes. seven teams. That's two tiers. Now we get yep. into tier three. And who the teams from me in tier three, and you kind of have a different order. But I'm gonna I think Miami belongs in tier three. I think SMU belongs in tier three. Where we okay. at Boise State, you throw into tier three at some point. Where I think we're gonna differ is also in tier three for me are South Carolina and Clemson. But I'm not sold on Clemson, but I would have them in my top 12 right right now. Knowing that one of those two teams is going to lose. I mean, it's it, it's a battle on Saturday in, in Clemson, South Carolina for to see who's going to stay in there from from my rankings. All right. So <laughs> we I have Boise 10. I don't love it. I have SMU nine. I actually feel a little bit better about that. Um, when I watch SMU play, I'm like, I actually just kind of think they're good. But this last stretch of schedule stuff, you know, back when people thought Pitt was was decent, like they've fallen apart. Sneaky Boston College, we both realized they show up to fight. They don't mm-hmm. win a lot of them. Uh, although they're six and five this year, so yeah. I'm just conference they're below 500. But there's not a lot to like here with the SMU stuff. But I I think it is a little mini Texas for me, and that when I watch them, I'm like, you know what I. I think they're good, and their loss is somewhat excusable, even though at the time I think they were like 13-point favorites against BYU. People didn't realize that BYU was going to be really good. So now that leads to kind of like 11 and 12. And I think everybody listening to this pod is expecting me to find a way to put Bama back in or excuse away Ole Miss or keep the A&M hope alive here. And I'm telling you right now, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was convinced after the Indiana-Ohio State game, everything kind of played out. I thought it was even worse than I thought it would be. Um, I certainly didn't think Indiana was going to win the football. The score game. might not have been worse, but after the first series and after the first ten minutes of that game, the the lopsided nature of it was worse than I even expected. Do you want to get in? All right. Do, would you have Indiana in your top twelve? Let's I would not. I it. would not. What do you have them like thirteen and then? Uh, I have them fourteen behind Alabama, and I don't. I, yeah, I have them fourteen behind Alabama, <laughs> and I don't love like I, I don't know what to do with Alabama right now. I'm totally fine being done with Alabama. I tried to give them another Rosillo push last week, um, and I, I'm done with it. Milro is not good. The fact that you guys. Like, I can't wait until you do the full evaluation. Make sure you have the draft clip of him on an offsides free play, throwing it out of bounds. Okay? I love that text from you the other night. Right. <laughs> like, hey, do you see this free play? Yeah, let's throw it five yards deep of the sideline. Um, and it wasn't all on him. The tackles were a mess. But Oklahoma, to review here, and this is why I'm totally fine with, like, I, I'm not, I can't schedule up. Bama. I can't be like, hey, you guys aren't, you guys don't get it. I don't think that Norman on a Saturday night necessarily is easy, but to really put in perspective who Oklahoma has been on offense, yards per play, I think they're 131 out of 134 teams. Like yeah. Jackson Arnold didn't really have to do anything. The running back was terrific. I thought there was a lot of like Vandy ish film study of the eye candy at the line of scrimmage to I agree. freeze. Alabama's front it was like oh it, it appears they're going to try to do some bandy shit to these guys and it froze them and then Milro had the disastrous game so you factor that in with the Vandy loss the Tennessee loss which is you know a good loss but I don't I don't love them you know Saban had one three loss season in 2010 which I thought was one of his most talented football teams and unfortunately for Kalen DeBoer it's in his first season replacing the legend I'm totally I like yeah, I can't schedule Bama. I can't give you the full scope of Bama and talk myself into the SEC stuff that everybody thinks that I'm going to do because I've seen enough of the bad version of it and it all comes to a culmination. The fewest points in two decades, an Oklahoma team that cannot move the football. Turnovers are a big part of it, but they also couldn't tackle them. They couldn't stop this young running back. 
that's actually a bad loss. Even if we know that Oklahoma was ranked during the beginning of the season, we know that it's a tough game atmosphere Saturday night in Norman it's, and the talent and all that kind of stuff. I can't do it well, a Saturday third night in Norman ain't that. Baton Rouge. I've been to plenty of Saturday nights in, in Norman and it ain't Baton Rouge. It ain't Tennessee. It ain't Georgia. Like it's just, it, it, it and I'm, it's, I'm not knocking all the folks in Norman and the Oklahoma. It, it, it It's, certainly a difficult place to play and they are passionate and they, but it, it it's not that uh, more importantly the, like, let's get to the point here the point is <laughs> alabama truly the point is yeah. this alabama came to the realization after their bye week that and they self-scouted did a great job but jalen milro did, really doesn't want anything to, to do with running or or, or i should better put jalen milro is not nearly the aggressive productive runner on scrambles as he is when he's on designed runs, right? So they came out in that uh, in the Tennessee game, and they they it was designed. I think eleven of his thirteen runs were designed runs. One hundred and seventy five of the one eighty five he had in that game rushing were designed runs, and they dominated a damn good Tennessee defense. I mean, didn't put up massive points on the board, but but they were dominant. And they you know, Milro running on designed runs was the new thing for Alabama. Wait, you're talking about LSU. I'm sorry, LSU. LSU. Sorry, not, LSU. Yeah, LSU. Sorry, LSU. Not Tennessee. Sorry, I'm, Tennessee completely shut them down. Sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm losing my mind. There's too many games. Uh, it's all right. LSU. Tough schedule. They got but a tough schedule. Is, you got to keep track of it. Yeah. <laughs> After the bye week, LSU design runs, and it was the, the it was way. ugly. It was yeah. ugly. But since then, we've come to realize that LSU is not, you know, that, that, that was a splintered team, and we've also come to realize that, like. You would think the thing that they realized that they're dominant at would would carry over. And Brent Venables is a phenomenal defensive coach. You could talk about him as a head coach and crew, like all those things. But as a defensive coach, he's phenomenal. And so if Oklahoma and that Oklahoma defense is really good, it really is. You match that up with the championship offense, and they they they're cooking. But still, to be shut down that much, and then to have your offensive tackles have an absolute nightmare of a night against Oklahoma and those edge guys. What do they have now? Because now everyone knows, like, all right, if we can stop that, if we can stop him, if you cut off his legs as a design runner, what do we have offensively? We can't protect. We get the, we get the best, of, if not the best, of not, one of the top two freshman wide receivers in the country, phenomenal player. But Yeah, I, I mean, he had two plays that didn't count that, that were, were <laughs> like highlights. They'd be the best single play for like 100 receivers in college football. But outside of that, and, and it doesn't matter how great he is necessarily when you can't protect a quarterback who yeah. is not a, a great pocket passer. So to me, like, I feel, feel like the, the stick is up for Bama. I don't have my top 12. I'm but then totally again, in a playoff it, game, I'm scared to death to play him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I think I still like a and and Ole Miss better than them. So the Bama buy-in thing the rest of the country will be happy to hear that I, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Okay. Right? I can't, I can't do it anymore. And I've never liked a quarterback the entire time. And by the way, the interception, his effort on the sideline, terrible yeah. towards the end of the game. I know he's upset and the whole thing, but like, that's not what I want out of my future NFL quarterback of like kind of having those moments on the sideline where it seems like he's completely shut down, like fake it better. You know, yep. I hear you. Um, so you don't have Bama 12. I do not have Bama. So let's go back to the tiers. First two tiers covered seven teams. The yep. third tier, it sounds like, while we're not agreeing on where they're all slotted, sure. we do have Miami, SMU, and Boise State somewhere in there, correct? Or no? We do. We do. Okay. So okay. my other two teams, yep. whether you want to call it fourth tier or that would be included in that bottom tier. Tier D. Are South Carolina and Clemson, and I don't have a ton of conviction right now. But if one of those teams goes out and has an impressive performance in a final game in a rivalry at the end of the season, I would have a hard time keeping them out. All right, um, the three losses for South Carolina. It's funny that like they're a three loss team. And I'm not even saying that you're just doing this because I've seen it throughout the weekend and that there was like a push that maybe Clemson, South Carolina is for 
an at-large bid. And I was like, well, I guess if you were in the committee and you go, Carolina got completely screwed against LSU by the officiating. Mm -hmm. It's three significant calls that, that have a great deal to do with, like, I don't love doing that all the time. That game, I think, is a prime example of, like, a couple calls go our way. Feeling a little bit better. Maybe it's a two-loss team. And again, South Carolina is like one of my favorite teams to watch in college football. But as we go through sifting through the SEC teams, there's still two more to do here. Losing to Auburn is worse than losing to Oklahoma or Florida right now. Old Miss losing to Florida. Like, I'm sorry, Florida's pretty good. Like yep. Lagway is going to be a stud. That freshman running back Baugh is a stud. There's I know that they got off to the terrible part of it, and this is kind of the, the, the weird scheduling stuff where it's like, oh, look at Notre Dame's game against A&M. Well, that's a really good loss. Well, I understand the record part of it, but did you, like, I feel, do we you feel better I agree. or worse you, you, you texted me, and I, I thoroughly agreed and was already kind of headed down that road. And I even, on our podcast Saturday night, I even said it's one of the 10 things that, like, I think I know now. Like, throw out the records based off of what we've seen recently and just, like, the last couple of weeks. You could make a strong argument if you were just to seed them that, that Florida is playing the fourth best ball or the fourth best team like right now. Like if you were to rank who you don't want to go to play as an opponent, I you can make an argument Florida would be fourth on that list behind Texas, Georgia, Tennessee. You really could. I <laughs> know. Uh, it I means nothing for this conversation, no, but I'm saying no. when you're starting to look like in perspective of those losses. Yeah, like I would just ask again, if you're just looking at the record, then you don't have to watch anything. You never have to watch anything, and you can just sit there and not watch Florida the last few weeks, despite Texas handing it to them. Yep. But it's it's pretty cool. And look, Ole Miss, the two Pegues, fourth downs don't work out. They've got the kicking issues. And then Jackson Dart, who physically I like. I love his competitive edge. I love his toughness. He also scares the shit out of me. Okay? He is... He's not he been great in, in late in games, trailing like in that the Kentucky moment, games. The Kentucky stuff was was actually, I think, even worse because it was at home than even what was happening here in Florida. He has a three picks. One is called back from flag. He's like, all right, we'll do this again. So it's technically the two picks there late that are a disaster. He's a mess. How many times do you get to re rack something twice after making a yeah. miserable decision? A pre snap read that he he just he committed to where he was going with the football through into triple coverage interception. Defense, they still have three timeouts. Defense stops and does, does its job, gets you the ball back. You throw another interception. And then you get to re-rack it because it was because the ball hit the ground a little bit on the what looked like an interception in real time. And then the third one, like of the three, was the least was least amount on him. But still to have three interceptions in the final few minutes of that game when your team needs you. And I feel terrible for the guy. I've sat and talked to him for 45 minutes a couple of times. I really like him. I like him as a competitor. He's done amazing things at Old Miss. He's been part of kind of bringing this, this program to a, another level. Uh, but if you're going to be in this mix, you got to have your quarterback make some big moment plays. And it just, it didn't happen. But, then, so but, I, do... but I also want to say, I've talked to some people who I, who like, from a talent per perspective and in college football in the, in the last 24 hours, to not, not talk, texting, really think Ole Miss is one of the 12 best teams still. Like, really, truly believe. If throw out the records, throw out, the, you know, throw it's not out. a good Kentucky loss, Florida record, all that stuff. Like, truly believe, pushing hard, like Ole Miss should still be in this thing way more so than, than Alabama. I look, if I had to, if you told me who do you like of the three teams that lost on Saturday night, Alabama's last now. Like, I've, I've just seen the Milrow stuff enough that I, I can't. Including trust AM? It. I like AM better than Alabama. Yeah, I'm not. Today. Not today, yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree. Today, I do. You know, I don't, I don't know what to make of the Texas game because I think AM can get that game. I actually they, do. They could, right. But I actually do. They should be even more pissed off after that deal against Auburn. But you can't, like, there have been years past where I would look at Auburn's roster, and it was always funny to me, like, even when Auburn was terrible, 
you go, who's that guy though? Like what, you know, mm-hmm. there's just still littered with dudes and you're figuring, okay, well, four of those guys are probably going to transfer after this disastrous season. Peyton Thorne was legitimately terrific in the first half of her season where he probably regrets even being there. They're up 21, yep. nothing. So credit for AM to get back in, but you cannot spin this as like a competitive Saturday night on the plains, even though it's a tough place to play when you scored seven points against Vanderbilt a couple weeks ago. Okay. you, you lost four straight SEC games. They lost to Cal, who's sneaky, acceptable, if that's mm. a term. Um, <laughs> this, is, this, is not, this is not a good Auburn. Football. This is a no. disastrous 2-5 and five season here. So that, that loss is bad. So of the losses, it's the worst based on the opponent, yet I still would like them better than maybe even Alabama and Ole Miss. And this brings it to full. We're, we're 27 minutes into this. We haven't really dug into the Indiana part of it. Okay. I have them 12. I fucking hate it. I hate having it play. <laughs> I was arguing against Indiana before 2024. Indiana even existed. When we first heard about conference expansion, I warned the country about what was going to happen with these schedules. When we first started projecting it out to 12, maybe even 14 teams, which was my new favorite thing. We're like, well, you know, they really should have done 14 teams. Yes, let's bring in more of these teams that haven't done anything. I was like, this is going to happen. We're going to be inviting teams to a party for a chance to win a national championship that have done fucking nothing. Now, (laughs) winning these games is not nothing, okay? Indiana, despite how bad they looked against Ohio State in the shoe on a Saturday afternoon, I don't think that you can't, you can't be 10 and 0 and suck at football. So I'm not saying they they suck. They don't, they don't. But I have a huge problem, as I've said all last week with this part of it. Let's look at their drives, Todd. I'm hot now. I'm warmed up. It only took a half hour. So three and out against Ohio State, 11 plays, 70 yards, touchdown, three for three on third down. You're like, whoa, okay, these guys are ready to play. However, the middle possessions, let's call it the seven real middle possessions because we'll forget about the end of the game and we'll forget about the end of the first half when they got it back. Eight yards, these are the drives and the totals. Eight yards, negative seven yards, negative four yards, the half. Two yards, eight yards, 32 yards, negative 11 yards, and then the late touchdown, which I think was maybe the most damning thing from the Saturday. So Signetti, who I get it, man. It's a bit like the Lane Kiffin thing, the Deion Sanders thing. You show up to Bloomington. A lot of guys are like, who's this dude? James Madison played tough football. He brought a bunch of those guys over. Mm -hmm. you got to get people to pay attention to you. So when you show up to the rallies, you're playing to a home crowd. You start motherfucking everybody, and it's on. He went on last week with Clatt, Mark Ingram. I don't love that he made fun of Bama playing Mercer when it's like, bro, have you looked at your out-of-conference? At least Bama went up to Madison and stomped on them. But I get it. Nobody... No coach can get on any of those platforms when they're being debated as much as the Hoosiers were being debated last week and start saying, you know what, my team actually might not be that good. When Saban was was trying to get his team in, I think in the TCU year, and he had said on the conference call, like, hey, Vegas would have his favorite against the entire field except one team. He got crushed for it. I didn't love it either. Totally understand why he had to do it because you can't go on saying, I have probably five out of these teams. All right, so I don't blame Signetti for stirring the pot and all these different things. What I think was disgusting from that game is that you're getting your ass kicked. This is what you've done. And then you decide that you're going to run 703 off the clock down 31 7, run it nine times, pass six times with no urgency because you kind of just want the score to say 31 15. That's what I think he was doing. And that's why I think at the end, with all oh. the talk, right, with all the talk, that's why I think they pushed it the last yes. one at 38 seconds. So we can me, do like, that we, too. If you want, if, yeah, right. Like, we can okay, we're not going to take a back seat to anybody. We're not going to do any of these things. Or Get you're going to run here. seven minutes off the clock, hoping that 31 15 looks better. Yeah. Get your, and that's, your, your backdoor respectable game against Ohio State shit out of here. Agreed. And I have them. Yeah, we'll, 12. Put a knee, we'll put a knee on and be respectful of it. We should be a conference team. Get out of here. That's what that <laughs> so was. Get, get out of here. Get so out I, of the, here. And the weirdest thing ever happened with Hoosiers fans, at least on the social media part, maybe guilty a bit of the polling of one here. So it's the last. You get your brains beat in. And then because the SEC has three losses on Saturday night, you get chesty Hoosiers fans. Give it 24 hours, okay? Yeah. Like, just give it 24 hours. I've never seen a fan it's like, base it's like they, it's be a, able to rally. It's like the boyfriend that goes and cheats. 
that goes and cheats on his girl. But, and then she goes out that night and, and, and dances with another guy and, and he comes storming in all pissed off. I'm pissed no. off at myself, though. I'm pissed off at myself because I have him 12. But I don't love the story of those three. I, I can't I can't do it. And look, the SEC is still better. There's this odd, vague thing that happens where it's, well, it's not that someone else is better. It's that they're not as good as you guys think they are. It's a very odd thing that happens. I, it's this this vague debate where it's like, no, it's it's not. It's like, okay, well, who do you think is better? Well, no one's better but this. Sane people can watch all of the stuff on Saturdays. I'm sorry if you can't see the difference between Florida and Ole Miss and even shit. Penn State and Minnesota. Here's like, the thing I want to say because I've got I've got taken a lot of heat. I've taken on a lot of water from Indiana fans, and I've got a couple of good friends, and they've been texting me, and they're not even mad. They they think I'm re- they're reasonable. Um, but I, I do want to say this: I studied because I, I wanted to really really understand Indiana before Ohio State, like really truly. So I studied I studied them. I think they've got three damn good college football wide receivers. Okay, they catch everything. They're efficient. They leverage their routes. They're smart. Um, they're, Rourke, when he has time to throw, can be very effective. Layers the ball, accurate, efficient, gets him out of bad plays, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. This is coming into the game, right? Their offensive line in the run game, hat on hat, like does, they do a great job of, of blocking as a group and moving like as a, as a ballet almost, you know? And their running backs are good. 17's got more juice, and I like 17, okay? The JMU, I think J, he was a transfer in. But, and then defensively, West, the defensive tackle, really good player. Kamara, Edge, good player. West is a stud. I mean, West is an absolute in the, stud. Even in the game in where the they're game, dominated, yes. he shows up, right? And, and right. they're disciplined, and they, they, they do with all the – and, and okay. honest to God, one of the most well-coached, well-oiled, like, as a team, I, just you watch it, and you're like, God, they're frustrating. Like, how, how, how are we going to – like it don't, it's going to take four quarters of discipline doing all those things. Okay. okay, all that. So it's not like I went into this thing like, oh, it's Indiana. Like I took the time. I really did. And, and I really like a lot of their part, a lot of parts and a lot of the things they're doing. But I also have taken the time with all these other teams. And Indiana is not like Indiana is not these other teams we're talking about. Indiana is not South Carolina. If you don't believe me in my tape study, like FanDuel, I asked them hypothetical odds, Indiana. Against Clemson, Clemson would be a, a two-point favorite. South Carolina would be a three-point favorite. Texas A&M, I was surprised to pick them when I asked. Ole Miss would be an eight-and-a-half-point favorite over Indiana. So, like, and those guys don't get things wrong very often. Yeah. I, no, I, I, no, I understand the spread part of it. I just think the talent part of it is, is – Well, that's why the spread's there. I'm saying, like, if you're not believing our eyes, believe people who make a I lot of money did. on this stuff. Like, I don't know what else – what other – I just, I don't see it. So I, I'll take the, I'll take all the heat. And listen, they apps, they're probably going to be in the top twelve. And the, they're going to be in the top. 12. They're going to be the, in the top. 12. The committee likes the Big Ten. Yep. They had four of the top. Like they had no problem having Penn State four and five when they did last week's rankings. So they're going to be back in there, and they're going to say, well, they lost on the road to number two, and you shouldn't drop out of the playoff. When, but my point would be, as it's already been covered, I have them twelve, and I don't like it. I have them twelve, and I don't like it. Uh, and all this is really, really political. Nobody's changing their mind. The SEC has a night like they do on Saturday, so it opens the door back up. But what's ATN interesting is you have, the them, you, have them tw- you have them 12, and you don't like it. Yeah. But if they are 12, you don't, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you have a, a big 12 team in your top 12, correct? Arizona State, 11. Because oh. Indiana fans told me that I hate Oh, so Cinderella's. then they would get in. And you, have, yeah. and you have Boise State in there. So they would get in in, in your scenario. Okay. Yeah. I don't hate Arizona uh, State there. I think they've earned it the way they've played. I, I just, if there were a three-loss SEC team, I could sit here and make an argument for where I go, hey, I'm convinced of this, which I'm certainly capable of doing in the past. When I did it Saturday night and thought about it, when I did all the prep last night, I woke up to do the show today, I was like, I cannot. Like, I don't, I'm not sitting here being like, I really wanted to sell it. I, yeah, I wanted to sell what I believed in, and I don't believe in any of those teams at this point. But I definitely don't believe in the premise. It has nothing to do with Indiana. 
okay, this is my Penn State rant from years ago, is I don't, I don't like this. But the committee likes the Big Ten. Good reminder. Uh, they're treating this more like standings. They could reset this whole thing after the conference championship games. I've told myself, like when I do my final rankings, which again, don't mean anything. I don't know that I want to reward the team that misses out on the conference championship game and then bump them up over the conference championship game loser. But I'm worried that that's going to happen. It's back to the Lane Kiffin thing. But the timing of his whole argument of like not wanting to be in the SEC title game ends up his egg on his face because everybody's like, oh, now you don't have to worry about it. But it still was his point. Um, but I, I, I don't have much more other than I thought Saturday was so weird because and it's like i'm paying attention to and like look i worked with danny for two years i know the bit i know the routine it's mm -hmm. like it's like somebody tweeting like hey i thought the eggs were going to be cheaper type shit you know it's like really political and i'll never quite understand dismissing you can hate the sec you can hate all these things you can love saturday night uh, and I don't have any of those teams in. So I think some people probably thought I was going to try to find a way to do it based on me talking up the SEC. But I just ran through an exercise and I didn't even know what the teams were ahead of time, right? Yeah. Um, these are the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth place teams in the four major programs or four major conferences. You ready? Mm -hmm. Big 12's K State, TCU, Texas Tech, West Virginia. ACC is Duke, Syracuse, UVA, and Virginia Tech. Mm hmm. The Big Ten is Iowa, Washington, Michigan, and Minnesota. Jeez. The SEC is Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, <laughs> Missouri. Florida's 10th. <laughs> yeah. So um, the top of the conference is down. The conference is not going to get the five teams in that it no. wanted to. I'm off of that train. A loss at Auburn is bad. Getting stomped by an Oklahoma team bad. that is one of the worst offensive Worse. teams in college football is bad. Um, I actually think the lagway combo and all that stuff, losing at Florida, is, there's there's worse losses out there. Yeah, I there don't are. have any of those teams in. I have Indiana in, uh, and I don't and, know and you're going to wind up being right. And I I think they're going to be in. They're yeah, gonna be in. I, yeah. I'll be surprised if they're not. But I that doesn't mean I have to agree with it. Yeah. yeah, but I, I do wonder, like, I'm like, I can't, like, I think it is, like I said, I've already said it three times. It feels more like standings, or that's what people want, is they want standings. That they want to go, well, if you have three losses, this team has one loss, and all these different things. But even doing that with Indiana, like, I have to respect the fact that they could win 10 games. I don't respect the fact that they got their asses handed to them. And I think we're, we're sort of hoping for uh, maybe in two weeks the score will look more respectable thing. Uh, they're not, certainly not the only team to ever do something like that. I remember, I think I was at Oklahoma Mizzou when they were losing and Stoops punted. And somebody was like, did you punt there because you wanted the score to look better? And Stoops was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I actually my, remember that game. Right. And it was like my slow, like going from not being able to stand Bob Stoops to just loving Bob Stoops. For and who he is. Yeah, and I, he was like, yeah, he was like, seems like, well, I forget what the answer was, but it was just an awesome, honest, like, you can only answer it when you've already won a national championship that way. It was the same year he kicked me out of his office. Yeah. For, yeah, uh, he, for trying to get him to, to show me how that they were going to try to, I think it was West Virginia, <laughs> how, how he would defend the, the West Virginia triple option. He's like, fuck, you want, you want me to give you a game plan here? I'm not doing that for a game day segment. What are you talking about? Get out of here. <laughs> and then we had to, like, call fitting, and Herbie had to, like, intervene. Like, we came back <laughs> in, and we did some, like, fluff piece for 15 minutes. And it turned out, it turned out they played West Virginia at the end of the season in the bowl game. And so it would have been. That's right. It would have been a disaster. <laughs> oh, it's funny. We ended up loving Bob. I oh, had yeah. A tough, Absolutely. I had a couple tough, like, I'd be down in Norman, and I'd have, like, a one-on-one -on -one with my little handheld thing with him. And it was, it was, the first one got off to such a terrible start. Yeah. I was like, what's going on with your defense now? Like, me, just classic, like, abrasive. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing back there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he was like, what you feel to realize? I was like, oh, shit. And then, um, then he yeah, had one were... where he just... 
he just like blew us off entirely. Like I waited hours and hours and hours before the BYU game when Bradford got hurt. It, did, it was the first real football game in the new Cowboy Stadium. So they played a college game there before they played an NFL game. Oh, that's so right. We were there that. for that. Yeah, because the other thing too is we had sideline passes and we still got kicked out of there. It's like the only place I've ever had a sideline pass where then I was kicked out. I was like, what is going on? I was like, I just did a show outside of this fucking place for seven hours. The guy's like, I don't care. Are you doing anything right now? I was like, it's... taking it in, bringing back perspective <laughs> to uh, a radio show that has 400 affiliates. It's heard around the world. There's troops listening to us. Uh, you Fuck were, you. there are troops <laughs> listening to us. You were <laughs> abrasive. I'm not saying you're not now, but I would say you were un- unjustifiably abrasive at certain points in your career. Is that fair? Yeah, I'm a very not housebroken uh, well person, put. and I don't mean it like I push my chair in, I clean up after mm-hmm. myself. I don't, I don't mean it in that way. I would say because there's other people I'm around where I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how did you grow up? Right. You know, I'm not that kind of. I'm I'm corporate on housebroken. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm better now. I'm better now. Yeah, you are. But you are. Back then, uh, you know, look, what's the point of a warm up question? If I have seven minutes with Bob Stoops, let's get to it. How come you guys are getting lit up on the outsides? <laughs> exactly. All that's right. What- I have Indiana 12. Uh, I guess that's the headline. You don't. I saw your rant, and we both know they'll be there Tuesday. So, yep, I agree. Big 10. All, All right. right. Sounds good. Thank you, Todd. Thank you to Todd McShay. You can check him out every single week three times a week and live on saturday night for the college football schedule recap the mcshea show please subscribe on spotify right now you want details bye i drive a ferrari 355 cabriolet what's up i have a ridiculous house in the south fork I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Life advice, rr at gmail.com. I'm sensing some sniffles again from Kyle. I'm right off the top. Are you all right, buddy? Yeah, it's. I mean, I, I trade the sniffles. I actually, I hurt my back helping a stranger on Saturday. I was doing my, um, I was doing my like, you know, morning power walk jog thing. It's probably more power walk than jog, but it, I'm, I'm improving every time. Getting those steps and, in. And uh, I'm probably like, probably like a mile and a half away from home. And a guy comes absolutely firing out of an RV parked on the side of the road. He's wearing like old timey pajamas, like a, a gas full, mask, the full old, like the full thing. Like you think he should have like a hat and a candle. He's barefoot and he's so frantic. And I've, I've got the press box in my ears, you know catching up on the friday episode mm. shout out to those guys and he's like can you help me can you help me i'm like oh fuck i really shouldn't i i don't even, I, so i i pause i'm like what do you need man and, and he's like i don't know his eyes are bulging and he's just like i need help he's he's got this uh like trailer with i think at least two generators like next like behind his uh rv and he's like I, it's like it's not coupled you know it's like close but it's not there and he's just like will you help me please i i gotta I, I got to get this connected. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So he's like, all right, one, two, three. And he's so frantic. The first time we didn't get it. And, he, and he's like, he resets. He's like, one, two, three. And I like just done. I'm just frantic. And I, I just don't lift with my legs. And we get it. And he's like, oh, man, you're so strong. Thanks so much, man. And I'm thinking, I just really fucked my shit up. And so I was embarrassed because he was complimenting me. So I like kind of like slowly walked around the corner and just like stood against this wall so he didn't see me. And I was like, wow, I still have so much left in this walk. Uh, it's getting a little better, but that's what happens when you try to be nice. Do you think you lifted a dead body in a box? No, there were definitely, like, there was no room. He had, like, that thing was was packed with, like, everything that guy needed. He lives there. Like, he, you know, mm. he's a road warrior. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know. He's got, I think he was just packed to the gills there. And yeah. I mean, when you when you dress like that and you're and you move like that, I can see why he doesn't talking like Ebenezer help. Scrooge looking stuff like, you know, yeah, what I'm but, talking about? Yeah. yeah, but like, yeah, exactly. That that's the type of get up he had on. But no, but no shoes um, early morning. Ah, it was it was strange. Damn, I just like went, a little and I was like, I think I'm safe. I think I can help him. And then I hurt myself anyway. 
Hollywood. Yeah. I think you got to. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to be like? Nah, dude. Sorry. (laughs) Well, you know what? I actually got gassed up a little bit because there was a smaller guy in front of me, way smaller. And he jumped. He ran out with that guy, looked at him, kind of looked back at me. And then was like, that's my guy. You're my guy. Yeah. 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 Do you think um, Do you guys know the Will Forte in the I think you should leave when he's on the plane as the old man? (laughs) It's a good one. Kind of like that. No, didn't look anything like that. Black dude, actually. Um, but like, you know, kind of tattered pajamas. And I just couldn't stop looking at his feet. I was like, dude, we're on Formosa. I used to live on this street. Like, there's glass everywhere. Glass needles. And he was just, he was like running around out there with barefoot. I was like, man. A lot of people tell you if you just, we, we all went back to barefoot, we'd be better. <laughs> yeah. We'd have just hobbit so, feet. Just hobbit style, uh, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Imper- impermeable. <laughs> Bilbo back. Cal- shoes <laughs> messing us up. Big shoe money. Uh, all right. Well, that's a good story Damn. to start us off. Uh, Sorry, for the dude. record, Srudi, I would I would not have helped. I don't think you would have either. You would have just kept the headphones in and kept it moving? L.A.? L.A., L.A.? Somebody screaming, running at yeah, me. Yeah, not you Manhattan Beach, you help. We're talking Li- real L.A. Li- yeah, <laughs> well, I definitely living. started on my back foot, and then, I don't know. He was, He did a really good job of getting right in my face, like right in front of me where I couldn't just kind of like, do the bill simmons move and never stop walking like i just could i don't know it just would have been weird i didn't want to look scared either because i was just like i sized him up and i was like you yeah. know what even if he if this goes crazy i think i got a good chance yeah who know. knows though his traction barefoot no, chasing good you down. He knows what he's got in that rv but you know yeah i can't I you may be an accessory pockets. and you don't you don't even yeah. that's the part that i don't think you're understanding <laughs> yeah why does he have to get out of here on saturday street cleaning's out there on monday What's there's gonna on? be another article <laughs> in like the new york times about some guy kyle enc- encountered like the uh <laughs> the frolic room swindler any updates on him i've asked around um i don't know what happened to him i know he had some real charges but i haven't, I haven't seen anything in the paper that guy's in costa rica okay. right now definitely Kyle ends up visiting him. We hear like he's like, yeah, I actually reconnected with him, and he's got this nice little villa. Like, he was, fine. Mis- he was always nice to me. Yeah, big misunderstanding, right? really. Yeah, he invited me this spring. Actually, uh, I'm thinking about going. He said he wants to make good on the Super Bowl next time it comes through L.A. So <laughs> he's got Olympic uh-huh. stuff. I'm just going to give this guy a shout out. 100. percent He just sent me a ton of boat listings, and it just happened this morning, and then it was forwarded to me through our vetting process. Um, the guy was like, look, here's a bunch of different boat listings. We've got one 95 foot sun seeker here. Jacuzzi on the flybridge. Kyle, you'd love that. Oh my God. You and me up there just toasting. Did, the it, life. did the list seem like he knew you or was he just, did he just like Google boats in the LA area or did he put a little thought into it? And he's like, he just left the, you know, the smaller ones out. No, I think it's it is tailored to me as opposed oh, really to nice. people that use the life advice email as their just spam, spam email to yeah. get the discount code. <laughs> and sometimes we'll just get it'll get real hot in this inbox. We're just going through it over and over and over again. So um anyway, I like the initiative there. Probably not buying a five million dollar boat. I don't even know. Didn't even just low hours. No one's ever posted a boat listing and said kind of a lot of hours. Maybe consider that life advice bathroom book. Maybe that'll put it down there. Yeah, life advice bathroom book. It probably would sell a lot. Not sure I'd want to write it. Um, and on top of everything else, start financing a five million dollar boat. Your accountant's just like, can you give me the gun now? Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. What do we got? What do we got? All right. Um, let's just go for it. Defecated in manager's car. Normally, I don't love these. I don't love the number two topic. Just constantly and some guys are so comfortable with it they love talking about it i never want to be one of those podcasts but this one's you can admit poop is a little funny though right yeah sure no problem but okay. like your way you're a very comfortable talking number two guy all the time yeah i said I before i could probably button it up a little bit i am working on that you know i don't care what you do you be you i never I want you to change i don't think i've ever heard kyle really go into detail on it like i mean i did i not tell you i've been trying really hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, you're, you're doing better i will say the poop, funny though the poop when you, you have a kid the poop thing you really get desensitized to it uh although like adult poop is a whole different story i don't really need to hear about your thing but i don't want to hear about it okay i don't i, I yeah I, tell you I, I don't like i don't like when guys are at your house and they're just like man just like, might want right. to open a window well Thanks. 
here's the thing. Like, so I know you, can, it. you don't need, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't need permission to use someone's bathroom, but I can just tell like some people, Bill included, would like to know if your plan is not number one. Maybe he'll direct you to a different bathroom. I don't know. Some guys, it feels like maybe I'm not even allowed to number two here. And well, maybe I should ask. I don't know. Like, this just seems like a different kind of household. You got to have some awareness, though, right? Like, you can't, you can't number two. Like, if the bathroom is right off the kitchen, and everyone's hanging out, not right, right the off the living room. room right? Like, yeah. have, some, have some awareness. Hey, is there a kid's bathroom upstairs I yeah. should go to or something? But then what? Then you have to say, man, <laughs> don't you? Like, I don't yeah. Know. How you get that point across? I think you look at a buddy and go, hey, man, bathroom upstairs. Which, just, yeah, that's why I'd be like, hey, what's the best? Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, best I, I, had, right I had movers show up two hours late when I moved from Boston to Hartford. Mm. They were Neanderthal, <laughs> like Western Mass guys. So they al- alphaed me immediately. Uh, my apartment in Boston was terrible. The bathroom was right there. The guy walks in two hours late. I could see they were deathly hungover. The first thing he did was destroy my bathroom while we were all going to be moving in this little apartment. Pass, pass the bathroom. Right. <laughs> I mean, the bathroom was the center of the apartment. <laughs> oh, no. So Perfect. it was the I'm like heart, looking at so the guys speak. and I'm thinking like, you know, they're like, oh, it was tough to do. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm in the game still, man. I'm like, you guys look so hungover. And, um, you know, they were massive dudes. And then. They followed me down to the new apartment in Hartford. They moved the stuff in. I didn't even have that much stuff. They tracked in mud and the carpet the first day I'm moving into my new place. My Hartford luxury high rise. Shout out to 21. Oh, yeah. And then the other guy destroyed that bathroom. Oh, I before, was going to joke. I was right. like, yeah. And then the other guy had to go. But no, he didn't. Yeah. And then the guy like was shaking me down for tips. Like he's like, oh, this is the total. And then you put you without tip, without tip, though, th- that total's not tip. Honestly, they were so big, I ended up tipping them. If they were been my size or smaller, I probably would have been like, hey, fuck both of you guys. Um, but I <laughs> could they tell. Good I was like, both t- they, they were like, all right. It was efficient. And the price. Yeah. yeah, the price wasn't bad, but I was like, hey, it's brand new carpet. Like, can, can we do like a stack everything and then? But, you know, it's kind of sucks to tell movers to take their shoes off. Back to the barefoot thing. It sounds yeah. like, Should I mean, that guy. dangerous, actually. Your guy, your guy would be really good at moving things um uh, so i didn't do that and they got <laughs> shit all over the place and metaphorically and uh then i was i you know i totally was like both these guys would kick your ass though so if you get if you get with like, these guys are the kind of movers that will actually punch you too if you like get into it with them in your kitchen <laughs> these guys don't give a shit about yelp <laughs> they don't care about anything i was like these guys have already been fired this is their seventh moving company i was like if you say something you're gonna get beat up you know you, these guys took dumps at both of your places and showed up late <laughs> and demanded a tip and got stuff all over the rug. And if you start with them, tell them to fuck themselves and no tip, you're also going to get beat up at your new house. So I was like, here's 50 bucks. I mean, it's a pretty vulnerable position too. Cause it's like, cool. What are you going to do? Like not move. What are we going to not move your stuff? Like, cool. Take a look with that couch. Yeah. Have, fun, the on last your, thing. have fun on right. your own. <laughs> Yeah, look, somebody came by here the other day. There was something going on, and it, and it was like a staff of people. I know this is a weird story. I'll explain it more later, but I can't now. And <laughs> well, the guy was like, do I have a bathroom to use up here? And I was like, there's that one. He's, and he just destroyed it. I'd known the guy two seconds. And uh, then the other guy joked, was like, yeah, he does that. I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. It's great to meet everybody. Donnie Dumps That's what we call him. <laughs> Yeah, right. And the thing is, is it was like right in the heat zone of like where I prep. Oh, so they were like, man. we need all of this time. We're going to need like an hour and a half. And I was like, all right, I'll just sit here. I get some stuff I can work on or whatever. And I was like, dude, I was like, if you were really going to do that, there were three other options here. Um, and so that guy was totally comfortable. With it. All right. We have not even read an email yet. We're 15 minutes in. So let's get to it. Defecated and manager car 185. Bench 215, don't squat, but recently got in a running. Player comp, right-handed CJ Miles. Lights out on a good day, but terrible when it's not going my way. Liability on defense, but that's beside the point. Very good comp there. Need advice on how you'd handle the situation. Drove my manager to a small town three hours away to stay overnight for work. Like I said, small town with a lack of food options. On the last day, we went to a diner with gross food. Went for the safe option and got a turkey sandwich. Is there a safe option at any of these places? This is what happened to me in the drive down to Jackson. 
I was like, not eating there, not eating there, not eating there. And it's like, I just want to eat. We were driving back, and soon in the drive, I could tell it was going to rip me up. About an hour in, my manager mentioned they don't like stopping on road trips for work, and they just want to get back. This is, this is brutal, man. I was doing my best to clench all the way home, but five minutes left, there was no hope course because the mind was like we're so close we're fine now um as they were dropping me off you were dropping off yep oh, so that's funny um that's funny he uh i don't know how else to say it is they dropped me off i shit on the seat there's the email <laughs> right uh they got out of the car the to seat. get my luggage and when i got out there was a small stain I tried to wipe it off of my shirt to see if I get anything off. I don't know if they saw anything, but now I can't look at them the same way. I don't even know you and I can't look at you. <laughs> how would you have handled this? And how would you have handled this going forward? I would quit. Yeah. No coming back. I, that's how I would handle it. I don't know what your situation is. Can you get another job? You've been sending out any feelers. There's no real, you're going to be the guy that shit in your boss's car on the seat and left a stain the rest of your life. Hold on, though. It sounds like, was the boss aware, though? Definitely no. aware? Well, he doesn't. I mean, you would think know, he'd dude. smell it. I, I'm not, I, I, he just doesn't specify that. So it's like, were you hiding it because he didn't know? Or was the boss just like not saying anything because he had no idea what to say in this situation? Which is probably No, he what said happened. they, they. They got out to get his luggage, which was nice to them, but he knew what he was doing. He was like, I'm waiting to check <laughs> when they, yeah. hey, you no, know, get your luggage out back. And he's like, all right, cool. And then he's looking down and going, oh my God. Like they're going to wonder, they're, they're going to be as close as you can be to 100% without being 100%. They're going to know that you did it, but then there's just going to be this moment of like just disbelief that that could have actually happened. <laughs> but again, it's science. Like some dude's stomachs get messed up. You did up, ask, man. right? He did ask. Yeah. Or did he have the information that he didn't want to stop or he asked and they were like, yeah, we don't really do stops. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Was there worse news in this guy's life than we don't really do stops that day? (laughs) We don't really do stops. What? What? (laughs) That was a great. Yeah, no, I get it. That was a great. What? (laughs) (laughs) What? Is there any other? What would you do, Kyle? You would, Kyle would like man and man up and just go, hey, not only did I do it, like you guys get it. Like sometimes you just <laughs> no, start, no. You this know? is on you, man. You said no, no stops. There's, man. there's no, there's no conscience here. There's no, you know, <clears throat> losing sleep. I'm thinking about this. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything unless it's, you know, 40 degrees outside. I'm like, man, can we crack a window in here? It's kind of like, you know, unless I don't know what time of year it is. If you could open the window, I would. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything. I would just hope that you break, you break the thing and you you fix it for the next guy because I just, I don't know how I would deal with that. Um, you don't want to be known as that guy if you can help it, you know? Um, what if they say something to you? What would you do? Then, then it's then the, the jig is up, and you know that's like when they they catch you in the first forty eight, and they're just like, all right, you might as well tell us now. I was like, gonna say yeah, that almost right. be easier. I'm, I'm that, caught. They're like letting you off the hook. You're like, all right, at least it's out in the open instead of like you just kind of like not knowing because that state of limbo sometimes is terrible too. Because you're just like, does, is everybody talking shit behind my back? Or maybe they're not. Maybe they are. I, yeah, funny. Ugh, I'd rather it just kind of be out there than it be lingering. I had a kid, there was a kid in middle school. This reminds me of uh, weird, it was like trampoline situation. He shit his pants, dropped off the trampoline. <laughs> and uh, no lie, he moved away. Like he, I, I don't know. I, I can't confirm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't confirm that he moved because of that, but it was 100% the right choice because his entire life in our town, he was going to be the kid that shit his pants on the trampoline. Freshman football. Uh, it was a Saturday practice, I believe. Um, the coach has to unlock the, you know, the facility. And it was like, I think it was going to be a two a days. I think it was August, like beginning, you know what I mean? Beginning of the season. And uh, everybody went out like an hour into practice. I was like, coach, I got to go to the bathroom. And it was like, it was a big high school. So like, and we practiced on the freshman field was like the furthest thing. So I run all the way back, but we're the only people there. You can't leave the doors unlocked because there's, you know, people using the track and stuff. The door is locked. I run, <clears throat> I run back to the coach and he, I guess he doesn't have the key and there's somebody else. And he was just like, well, you better do something. I don't know. And I'm just, I'm in the woods. I'm in the woods shitting. 
and uh, <laughs> guys start throwing footballs at me, you know? <laughs> well, I'm like crouched. I thought I went for, far enough back and it was like a new drill. They were like, all right, throw footballs at him. And I'm just, just you know, watching these, uh, these backup, like not the nice ones, but like kind of like the gym class footballs mm. that just, just kind of, you know, hitting Raining all around down me. on you. And I didn't like the feeling. I didn't, and I didn't even do anything, you know, bad. I didn't even have an accident, but it was just out of the ordinary shit story. And dude, that was like the talk of the town for the whole season. So, um, I can see you recovering from it though, in ways that others can't, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't, yeah, I just, it's kind of like that Barkley thing again. Like, I remember there was a kid on our youth football team who was just like a psycho and he was missing a digit on his finger, of course. You know, he's like one of those kids. You're like, what happened to your finger? Ah, I lost the tip of it. It's like an incredible <laughs> punt returner, right? Just <laughs> badass. And, you know, he would just got like. Got a weird spot on his head where the hair won't grow. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's like uh, it was an ice, an ice pick thing. Uh, when I think I he talked like, like Polly Shore for like three straight years and it worked. <laughs> you know, I know that's a little before you guys, but like Polly Shore, peak Polly Shore was a big, big deal oh, yeah. for guys like, you know, junior In the army high, now. early, early high school. And it was before I had moved too. And he just, you know, he was just a badass of a kid. Um, Pretty sure he'd stayed back a couple of years too, on top of everything else. But like, he was just the kind of guy who, who could get away with all of the things that most people can't. And like, it wasn't going to phase him. Like, nothing, he wasn't going to have to move. He would have been homecoming king after the trampoline <laughs> incident, Saruti. You know what I mean? So, like, some people can survive it. Some people can't. I always feel like Kyle can. Um, yep. I'm worried about our emailer here. I mean, you may be able to get away with this, but it would be something that I would notice. How nice is the car? How old is your boss? You know, these are other factors. These are other things that we need to know. And we desperately need an update email. We're going to need an update on this one. I would not go out of my way to admit this kind of thing. No. If you are busted, maybe with the holidays around the corner, a car detailing yes. coupon would be nice. <laughs> coupon. <laughs> No, I'd pay for the Not whole thing. Not even a gift certificate. I'd pay for the whole thing. 20% off. <laughs> Here's a 15% promo code over at Lance's Customs. It does work with the Black Friday special, though. You know? <laughs> Lance. You got you to buy an air freshener first. You can but, parlay that into a 40% yeah. if, you're, if you're nice about it. Uh, all right. Let's do. Good luck, dude. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> exactly. Great good luck. <laughs> I didn't even get it in. So Rudy, so Rudy, I shouldn't have. I piggyback so Rudy's good luck. My apologies. Um, so, uh, girlfriend is too generous. Blind one here. Five nine, really five eight. But I tell everyone, but oh, um, but everyone that I tell him five eight says no way. <laughs> he claims I'm five ten. Swear to God. Awesome so I'll be you. in the middle and go five. I love that people are out there being like, no way, you're five eight. <laughs> Just bigging him up. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. At least five nine. <laughs> you're Come an on, dude. easy five nine. <laughs> anyway 33 years old been dating my girlfriend for three years now we're both hopeless romantics uh until we met at 30 then boom she's my soulmate now we're engaged to be married in may kind of depressing if you're lonely reading that i say that to get to this <laughs> she bought her own place in the city seven years ago don't say this uh yeah okay i will okay. not say it he tells us where it is um <laughs> He's probably sitting there listening to this going, no. Uh, we've been looking at upgrading and getting a bigger space and found a gem just outside the city in the suburbs within our price range. Here is where she's too generous by selling her place that she bought. And I've been lucky to be paying rent to her the last year we've been living together. The down payment and money for needed renovations is covered. Whenever we talk future of the home stuff down the road, I mentioned how I'll save for upgrades like my personal home office or what to do in my man cave. And she mentions the profit we have. Save for me things. <laughs> <laughs> save for a boat to put in the garage. Yeah. Uh, like that'll be our outside boat. And this could be the ins. I love that one email. The guy whose dad was just collecting boats left yeah. and right. It was great. Um, that's not how he's doing it. Shoot him a Merry Christmas from the gang over here. Um, you got to afford him that even email. As we, <laughs> yeah, even as we go over our budgets and I have college loans and car payments, she again says she can help with that. Again, the profit we have for renovations. I've told her time and time again that she should be 
proud of her busting her ass to buy a place so young and then how buying in the right spot has paid off uh, for her to buy her, her dream starter home. I feel bad to basically be jumping on the bandwagon of buying a home. Mortgage utilities will be 50-50. We make the same amount of money. Should I say keep her money, spend it where she wants, and I'll take care of office man cave over time? Or should I embrace the 50-50 lifestyle? Also, it's 2024, so I feel like this gender role reversal could be the new norm. Sorry for the long email. It wasn't long. Don't worry. Mm. I should see some of the other ones. Good email. Uh, very good email. I personally would um, marry I'm her. just a little. No, I'm I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. How far away is uh, I'm a little old fashioned and I would, I like where your head's at with it. You know, like I would want to be able to be the one that provides. Um, I, I think it just kind of, I, I want you to tell her to take that money and put it somewhere you're not married yet and you're like look you killed it on this investment to your point in the email put that money aside in some kind of fund or whatever you think's going to happen to the treasury or you know <laughs> apple card maybe four percent yeah let's go right like whatever <laughs> whatever you want to do right you just put that money aside and we'll move forward this way instead of you taking all that pro- i would feel i would not be able to let her do that for me that would bother me big time and I think before, again, um, even though she's soulmate and the whole thing, I, I don't think she should be paying to renovate your man cave, um, even though it's super nice that that's where her head's at. And clearly, you guys are probably going to get married and it's all going to work out. You're going to live happily ever after. But I would not allow that to happen. So, but to it. be clear, though, if it's the other way around, you would be cool with it? Well, actually, great question, Saruti, because if I were to meet somebody <laughs> that I was like really serious about, the whole idea that like, yeah, you just get half now. You're on scholarship. No. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, not really. Not when I have like siblings that until I you're married. Care. Like, like it, Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And by the way, a lot of stuff's gonna be covered. You're gonna be all right. Mm-hmm. Be good, you know. Is your name gonna be on the checking account? No, you know. But I uh, get boat access, though. Yeah, you do. (laughs) You have boat access. I had to bring that thing in the other night. Dark, it was dark. Just had been a little while, and they got away from you. (laughs) No, I mean it was it was fine. It just wasn't the cleanest docking ever. Again, solo forty six feet. So when it's dark (laughs) and it's windy, and I was coming around, I was like, "You got this one today. You got this one." I was like, maybe we turn down the music. Maybe we turn down the music just a, a smidge. And no, Kyle, I've never docked it drunk. So I've, I've never even desired to be like, I want to be drunk and see. I'm, no, thank you. Again, drunk, what are we talking about? We're talking like not even close. Uh, bathroom on the boat? Two. Two? Whoa. Two bathrooms, yeah. So I so would one, have to ask. One for, yeah, one for the movers. Yeah. <laughs> I would have to ask which one you want me to use. Uh, all right, well, let's hear from you guys. You guys are the ones that are actually in relationships, so let's go. I think around the time, like maybe maybe I did grow up a little bit with that sort of like mindset where it's like, yeah, I'd rather be the pro- provider. I think by the time high school rolled around, though, I was just like, I don't think I'm on the track to be a provider. I got to be honest. Like, I think we're going to have to <laughs> a real have a 50, modern guy. <laughs> I think we're going to need to have a 50-50 relationship here no matter what. I just don't, I just don't see... <laughs> <laughs> I so i think i'm a little more <laughs> i'm like a little i'm a little more okay with it um but i do i do think i would sleep better at night if i was just like listen when the time comes to pool everything we'll pool it but you know why don't you just why don't you do the the smart thing and then i mean it could also end up coming back to help us once mine is yours and yours is mine it's like oh look at this little you know thing that we did the smart thing for pool the fries yeah yeah the prize. That's good. it's tough man it's a good life advice it is good, good it is good i i tend to agree with you ryan i would be uncomfortable like taking that but I, that's just i think that's just who you are not you specifically but just like who this person is as a person like some people are just like whatever man yeah it's all 50 50 like we love each other it's great other people are like i don't want to be a mooch even though like you're clearly heading in a great direction and will likely you know not have to worry about this in the future but you I'm kind of with you because like I'm like a little bit obsessed with self awareness. I so I'm I'm in kind of a, a a weird spot because 
when my wife and I first met, uh, I was making more than her, like a good amount more. Uh, and her career is like kind of taken off a ton. So now she kind of laughed at me. And when we bought our first house, it was a lot of my money and we did really well on that. But like now, like, you know, if I want to go drop some Viore sweatpants, it's like, hey, honey, like, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> that time of year. <laughs> uh, so it, it's kind of like Promo code BS. It's That's kinda, my yeah. hell, by the way. What? That, that would be my hell to be like, hey. <laughs> Well, it's not like I have to ask permission, but it's just like, hey, no, we're, I know. we're doing all right. Be, like, you know, we, <laughs> and, you know, I, 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 we'd be fine with mine, but she's doing really well. So it's great. And it's just, it, the, the dynamic is kind of a little weird in my head, but it's like, I, you know, I, I it just kind of flip flop. Like, I feel like, you know, I took care of you. You take care of me. Like now we're like, you know, I was setting up for our daughter, daughter. So like, again, if, if you were just like dating, and you didn't know where this was going to go. I think you'd have, a, I, I think it'd be more right to feel weird about it. But like, I don't know. I feel like if you're headed towards marriage and this is like, you really do love each other. It's all going to kind of just even out in the end, man. Like I, I <sighs> Here, here's what she may want to, she might be such a, like so sincere about like wanting it to all be cool. I would say, okay, whatever the number is, you know, if it's a couple hundred grand that she made on this thing, be like, can you put 150 in it of it into something, into some kind of like longer term, less volatile thing that you have? Because that's really what it should be. If you have an early real estate win in your life, um, you know, to have that kind of cushion, because like I've had friends that did it. I, I never did. Um, I couldn't even, I think when it was like, the worst time ever to buy thank god because i couldn't even qualify for anything one because of finances or any other things so some of my friends from my generation they got smashed on just paper value um honestly it feels more like paper when all your equity has gone your down payment because the housing market has completely corrected itself but why am i doing this speech this is so stupid anyway the point is is that do something where you convince her to be like, look, if you want to do some of these upgrades and all this stuff, but like the fact that we're just going to spend all of this together because we're going to be together, like, I just don't think that's right. And I would push for her to talk to somebody who understands managing money and something that is very, very safe that she has. Because for the, you know, who knows? If there were any reason why it didn't work out, like the first thing she'll say to her friends is like, I can't believe I put in surround sound for stupid fucking Call of Duty. You know what I mean? No, no, I do it on that one. Hey, Tess Kyle is chalking up with the game at that point. Like, you you, you thought you were in love. (laughs) Love can be costly. All right. uh, That'll do it for us on the pod today. Thanks to Oregon. Thanks to Kyle. Thanks to Saruti. Make sure you check out our YouTube page. We'll have something up this week. Brian Russell Podcast, Ringer Spotify. 